Well, guys, the uh, the PC market is wrecked right now. It, it is a huge joke that this can even happen on uh, the game, honestly. We're going to go and look at it today and talk about a couple of the problems with it and some of the things that might leak over to console here in a little bit. Uh, and EA tweeted out the content today. We have the Player of the Month, the League Player of the Month. It's actually going to be announced today, I believe. And it might even come out today, so we'll talk about that as well. But before we get into anything that I'm going to talk about today, send me your guys' teams on Twitter. It is at JFC. It is right there, right there. I told you guys to do that once, like right for team of the year i realized that was kind of a dumb idea so some of your guys' teams and make a video out of that uh in the coming days here if you guys want to buy coins you can go to mmoxp.com the link is in the description use my code jfc at checkout for a five percent discount but in this video today things are going to be mostly negative no surprise there however let's start off with the positives and uh the 81 plus player pick came out and i just like the fact that player picks are out I always do. I like the fact that they re-upped it as well and, you know, made it a plus one overall with, I think it's just one, two more commons. Two more commons than the 80 plus player pick. And I think this is just good. I think player picks are just fun. Honestly, they're always something fun to do on the game. They're better than packs because packs are just not very good this year, honestly. So I'm happy to see player picks are back. Um, And then not other than that, 82 times 20 came out and this is pretty grossly overvalued, honestly. An 85 squad with the team of the week and an 83 squad with one 86 plus player. You could genuinely get nothing higher than 84 in this and i wouldn't be surprised honestly so that's a pretty bad spc i am not gonna lie there and we did get our showdown McAllister and nicholas jackson as well and i always love showdowns i'm glad that they're a thing you know McAllister and jackson they both look okay um i i do really wish they gave them an extra play style plus for winning and maybe they will do that but why is there no no details about that whatsoever here people who just got the game do they even know these cards get a plus two i mean where's the information about this if you read the description here it just says earn a showdown McAllister from the Carabao cup final match and nothing else about it i mean what if they did get an extra play style plus that make things more interesting here maybe they are going to and ea just didn't say anything about it but nicholas jackson's here and he's four star four star um you know if he got extra play style plus i would be much more inclined to want to complete this but obviously you know liverpool are favorites and McAllister just has ping pass plus which means he doesn't really have a play style plus honestly he kind of doesn't and all right well in that case i don't really think this card's insane uh the stats are good but i think that play style pluses matter more than stats so but okay let's look at the leaks and the news and stuff and uh a, a riveting riveting week of content apparently coming up here from ea's point of view this week in ultimate team future stars spcs uh okay we know you doggies coming we saw savio today who i actually forgot to talk about uh yeah savio came out pundit picks sbc this has not been leaked yet as to who it's going to be or for what match it's even going to be the showdown i think was literally today because this was pre-content today so this is already off the content for this week and then also upgrade sbcs which is also what we saw already so this could be potentially the content for the week is this too uh, all right. I mean, we didn't even get the set piece moments refresh on there, which means uh, that's not even coming this week. So what the fuck is coming this week? Probably not much. Now, it's kind of funny because I, I said in a couple videos ago, I was like, why don't we, can we just slow down for a bit and like not release a trillion things? And I'd be so for that. Uh, the problem is the game modes don't exist to actually play the game repeatedly to use the content we already have in a way that's still fun and engaging. There's no way to do that. So if we slow down content, we have to, in one hand, be able to use all of these players in lots of things every day. Otherwise, I mean, we're just doing nothing on the game. So I don't hate slowing down content at all. I don't hate it, but I do think it makes no no sense when there's nothing else to do in the game so if there's no content and the game modes are always time locked to xyz well all right then people will log on at 6 p.m content and log off at 602 because what the fuck what what else is there to do also guys the first five play style plus card <laughs> does exist this card is real yes i i've seen it on or i've seen a couple players have five play style pluses now long ball jockey relentless dead ball and incisive pass yes this is an extremely rare thing that like almost no one's gonna have but it still strengthens the point that the fact that somebody's out here with this card and you can't upgrade your founder's evolution past like the point that you even started with on the first day of the game because some founders evos could not be used in that other founders evo that they released it's like here people are with this card you can't upgrade yours i mean that's it just woke up this game has been just a shit show we all know that by now let's talk about the pc market quick here if we go to team of the year um right now pc market uh i think mbappe holland messi bellingham and teo were all extinct just a little bit ago let's see if there's a teo in the market there is it's for 13.8 million i mean this is just ridiculous and obviously as you guys know the just the fact that on the playstation and xbox this card is 5.1 million coins 
is already insane. Triple that almost, and you got the PC price, right? If you go look at Team of the Year Holland here, uh, obviously, you know, he's 11 million coins on PlayStation and Xbox, one of the best cards in the game, of course. Go look at the PC sales history here. So look at PlayStation and go to daily. You can see that like this card's being listed, right? Every single day, there's been a price change here. So he's never been extinct is the point. Look on PC here. Let me go back to daily here. And uh, there has been since February 1st, there has been one moment in time at 15 million coins, February 9th, where this card has existed on Futbin. Obviously, Futbin does not update constantly, right? It updates very often, but it's not constant. So there could have been times in here where Holland was listed and, you know, it was immediately bought, right? But the point is, if you're not actively looking for this card, you pretty much can't find it, right? February 9th was the last time he was even listed on Futbin for anything. And before that, it was 19 days ago. So that means... If you are a player who puts in, you know, thousands of dollars into this game, but you're on the PC version, you still do not have access to all the content in the game because you can't find it. It's, this is artificial scarcity. Now, do I agree with you that you should have spent thousands of dollars on this game? Of course, I don't agree with you, but you can choose to spend your money however you'd like. And if you spend three grand and you have 15 million coins and you still don't have access to everything in this game, that is just asinine. And yes, people might say, well, you should have known this was going to happen. You got to go play on the PS4, PS5, Xbox market, right? You can't let EA slide on that just because, oh, you should have known this or that. This is EA's problem they created. They made Team of the Year virtually impossible to pack. I mean, you people just were not packing any, spending thousands of dollars in the game. All of this change, all of this here, is not because, oh, there's less players in the PC. Because there are less players on the PC. But EA should not force your hand and your experience on this game. There's, they should not have to force you to buy a console and start over from scratch if you didn't know and this was your first year playing Ultimate Team. I mean, just the fact that this is even a thing, and it's all on EA, because they want artificial scarcity, you know, in this game, is more of a problem than I think a lot of people realize. Because because for one, clearly this is the business model that's working for them. And this is not going to stop anytime soon. Why would they stop this if the profits kept going up? Because they're not thinking 300 IQ wise, thinking about the long term outlook for their game. They probably are thinking about it slightly, but not enough to pass up the quick return and insane profits they're getting right now. But clearly the player base for this game is down for one. And for two, the fans who are still playing this game, almost none of them are very happy. But the truth is, they don't really care that much because the profits this year are there. They made a ton of money during Team of the Year. It came out that they're making a lot of money in Lionel Messi right now, by the way. February 13th, there was one up. 17th, there was one up. 8th, 7th, the point still stands. I mean, there's just, you can't find these guys. The fact that Virgil van Dyke, who even on console where there was millions upon millions of users that all had packs opened during Team of the Year... There's one on the market, one Van Dyke. You think one will be listed on PC anytime soon then? Of course not. There was one on the 24th of January and Futbin hasn't caught one since. It's been almost a month and Futbin has not caught a Van Dyke on the PC. I mean, this is an insanely troubling thing that everybody should be worried about. I'm not the kind of guy that's like, oh, doom and gloom, everybody panic, the world's gonna end. But if they're making more money this year, you don't think they're gonna do this again next year and maybe even make it worse? Of course they're gonna. They don't give a fuck if the player count dropped. If everyone drops a thousand dollars and the player count drops, they don't care because then they have all the addicts and all the whales in that case, and then they're all spending money anyway. They don't care about the casuals anymore. Or sorry, the people who don't spend money on the game, they don't care about them. The casuals, you know, depending the casuals who do spend money, they'll care about them. But the point is, I don't think they're thinking long term for this game whatsoever. They're milking everybody in the short term to fuck pause to fuck everything up in the long term, it feels like to me. Now could I be wrong in that? A million percent I could be. But honestly, I don't really feel like I'm going to be very wrong in that. Let's look at Cole Palmer here, Future Stars card. 5.3 million is 2 million coins above the market value. If you're on PC, of course, every single card is going to be way more expensive even if they are on the market because there's just less of them. Now, that's not something that's been too exclusive to this year. However, this year it's ramped up even more because of just the level of scarcity there is. When there hasn't been crazy scarcity, there will always still be less users on PC, so the market has always been like slightly higher. But to this level where it's been like almost double on some of these cards, no, it's not been like this. It's not acceptable. This isn't acceptable. It's just one facet of the game that's not acceptable. There's a million facets of this game that are just so bad this year that they are milking you in the short term right now, and it might just cost them in the long term. I don't know, but this is why we need just some competition of some kind. 
we need another football game desperately to do something because as things stand right now, I'm not, I've always not really been a person that's like thought there could be some real competition from EA in terms of people are just so addicted to this game that people just will never leave it. But if things continue like this, I do believe that if this is a prime time for 2K to come in and just give some sort of level of competition, I know 2K is not a great company either. They're definitely not. This is, this is prime time for them. If they capitalize right now quickly, if a 2025 game comes out, this might be a huge time. Now, back to FC24. Uh, Mbappe and Ben Yedder are probably going to be one of the two player of the month winners here. And it's supposed to come out today or be announced today at least. I'm assuming that means it'll either come out today or tomorrow or something like that. So once again, Mbappe will look like this. Ben Yedder will look something like this with obviously, you know, one play style plus most likely for both of these cards. Like I said before though, you know, what do you guys think about everything right now? I love reading your comments and talking to you guys. It's really what keeps me like engaged with this game is just talking to you guys because I know we're kind of all in the same boat together. We love football. We love parts of this game for sure. It's just so disappointing pointing out things are being run this year and I love talking to you guys about it. Let's read your comments by the way. I uploaded a video talking about five hidden tips that might be able to help you guys. Mr. Christian said ball tracking speed changed everything for me bro. That's a good look. So I had to plug myself quick. Shameless but there are some tips in here that maybe you guys haven't really heard of before that might help you guys out. At gym class heroes is the biggest issue with gameplay is a three-part answer. Finishing, keeper movement, defensive AI. If you're able to somehow beat the CPU AI defenders, get lucky enough that another one of the seven defensive players in the box doesn't AI block your shot, then get lucky enough enough that your opponent doesn't move the keeper like a brain dead rat then you got to get lucky enough that your 93 team with your best doesn't just launch your shot 10 meters wide of the goal like what in the actual fuck and i think this is right you know people say that keeper movement you know ups the skill gap and listen you can add any mechanic into the game that technically could up the skill gap but the mechanic might just suck and that's just what keeper movement absolutely does it, it just sucks anything that uses strategy Technically adds a skill gap, uh, but keeper movement, it does do that, but it's just such a shitty mechanic. It's fucking terrible. Finishing's worse, and defensive AI is worse than last year. So you have just a trio of nonsense, right? And, and that is one of the biggest problems with this game. And also, the auto press, I'd probably add to the Mount Rushmore, I suppose, then, of issues. Uh, I definitely add the auto press to that. At Bree says, what EAFC needs to do is stop making this a yearly release. They bring out a game with so many bugs in the menus, let alone gameplay. Half of devs are already working on EAFC 25. And I've, I've always been of the opinion that this game should not be a yearly release. And I think the problem is they don't really know how to make a, a kind of a club rinse almost because like is that really ethical in their mind if they make if they change the game up and literally make a new game they can kind of say well you can play on that old game i know nobody really plays it but you can play on that old game with your old team and that's how you spent your money right but if they stop making a yearly release game and they kind of say at the end of every year they just kind of go uh well let's just wipe it all away that might be like oh that's too obvious <laughs> even though it's exactly what happens they might say oh that's too obvious we can't do that so let's just stick with the yearly release plan it's making us money fuck it even though the exact same thing happens everything's wiped away at the end of the year realistically right so i think that's the, literally the only thing stopping them from making this a non-yearly release because i think that they could really make a pretty decent game actually if they did not make a yearly release if they got the gameplay right and just change certain things up and every year they could you know reset teams to a certain extent they could easily do something really cool with that uh but they i think they're like uh that's maybe too on the nose actually let's just make a yearly release game it works for us Eh. At Nanad says, you are not very happy for the people that got team with your messy. Stop it. You could not be happy to play against that card every game. And no, there's a difference between being happy somebody got him and also happy to play against him every game. I literally wouldn't care to play against that card at all if everyone got messy. If everybody got messy, I wouldn't care to play against him because I'd also have him. But instead, it was a glitch, <laughs> you know, that allowed everybody to just get him for free or almost free, right? But I always think people should be able to get good cards i'm of the opinion that it shouldn't be that exclusive honestly i think if you play this game a lot you should get cards like team of the year messy but what pisses me off is the fact that some did some didn't off of an ea glitch <laughs> you know what i mean so yeah it's kind of a uh, it's a yes and no thing there but uh i think that is it thank you all for support every single day we're closing in on 12k that's all thanks to you i love you all since we're so peace